Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be implementing fog into our game. So the way that we're going to be simulating fog is by fading objects into the colour of the sky depending on how far away they are from the camera. Objects rendered far off in the distance will simply be rendered entirely in the sky colour and so will appear completely hidden by fog, while nearby objects will just be rendered in their normal colour and everything in between will be rendered using a mix of the sky colour and the object's usual colour, with the colour getting more and more similar to the sky colour the further away the object is. So if we imagine looking down on this effect from above, this is what the scene would look like without fog, and this is what the scene might look like with fog if the sky colour was grey. The further away from the camera that the objects are, the more similar their colour is to the sky colour. And there are a few different ways of calculating how foggy a certain point in the world should be. Let's introduce a variable called visibility, which will determine how foggy a certain point is. An object rendered at visibility 1 would be completely unaffected by fog, while an object rendered at visibility 0 would be completely engulfed by fog and rendered totally in the colour of the sky. So we need a calculation that converts a distance from the camera into a visibility value. One way to do it is using a simple linear equation. You'd have a distance from the camera in which everything is unaffected by the fog, a distance after which everything is completely hidden by fog, and a transition period where the visibility decreases linearly with distance. In graph form it would look something like this. This is the easiest way of calculating fog, but it doesn't look that realistic. The way that we're going to be doing it is to have the visibility decrease exponentially with distance, as this gives a much more realistic feel to the fog. And this is the calculation that can be used to achieve that exact effect. The fog density variable determines the thickness of the fog, and increasing this will decrease the general visibility of the scene. The gradient variable determines how quickly the visibility decreases with distance, and increasing this variable makes the transition from full visibility to zero visibility much, much smaller. So let's now get into the code and into the vertex shader where we're going to be calculating that visibility value for each vertex. And we're going to be passing that to the fragment shader afterwards, so let's create it as an out float variable. Now, if you remember from that formula I showed you earlier, we also need values for the density of the fog and the gradient of the fog. So I'm just going to create two constants here, both of them floats, one for density, which I'm going to set to 0.007, and the other one for the fog gradient, which I'll set to 1.5. And you can play around with these values until you get a nice fog look that you're happy with. So the final thing we needed for that formula to calculate the visibility is the distance of this vertex from the camera. So we can get the position of this vertex relative to the camera simply by multiplying the view matrix by the world position. That will give us the vertex's position in relation to the camera. So we can substitute that in there so we don't have to do it twice. So now that we've got this vector, this 4D vector, which is the position of the vertex from the camera, we just need to get the distance, which is just basically the length of this vector and GLSL has a handy function to help us out here. So we just want to get the length of the only the x, y, and z components because it's just the x, y, z position, the x, y, z distances that we care about. So that will give us the distance of this vertex from the camera. So now that we've got that, we can use that formula to calculate the visibility value for this vertex. So if you remember that, it was the exponential of minus then distance multiplied by density to the power of the fog's gradient. So that is visibility calculated. And we want to make sure that visibility stays between 0 and 1. Uh, I don't think it's really necessary in this case, but I just want to show off this clamp function that GLSL has where you can clamp a certain variable between two values. So we want to clamp the visibility here, and we want to clamp it between 0 and 1. Let's now go into the fragment shader, where you need to take that visibility value in as an input, because it's been passed from the, fragment, uh, from the vertex shader. Make sure you spell it exactly the same. That visibility has to have exactly the same name 
as you called it in the vertex shader otherwise this won't work and you won't get an error either so it will be a bit annoying then we need a sky color and we're going to take that in as a uniform because we're probably going to want to change the sky color uh, when we do our day and night cycle so we'll pass in the sky color each time and then finally we just have to create that mixture of the sky color and the actual color of the object and GLSL again has a very handy function to do this which is the mix it takes in two colors that you want to mix together and then you pass it a final float value to tell it how it should mix these two colors so we want to mix the sky color which will make a 4d vector first and the actual original color of this uh, fragment and the amount we want to mix it depends on the visibility value where zero visibility it would render it completely in the sky color and one visibility it would be rendered in the out color the original color of that object so now we have to do our usual thing for the sky color uniform variable so create an int called location sky color then we want to get the location of that uniform and here again you have to spell that correctly exactly how you spelt it in the shader code otherwise again it won't work and you won't get an error either so it will be tricky to find out what's wrong then we need a method to load up a value to that sky color so that's going to need to load up an rgb color and then we can just use the super.load vector method to load up this color to that sky color uniform variable in the fragment shader and that will need a vector uh, so once you've done that we can go into the master renderer because this is where the sky color is determined we determine it here in the prepare method in this gl clear color this 0 0.05 uh, 0 0.5 they were all the they were the colors of the sky so I'm just going to create uh, some constants up here instead of hard coding those values in let's put them up at the top here so that we can reuse them so choose your red green and blue values for the sky then make sure you put them into the gl clear color method if you haven't done something like this already and then we can load up that color now to the shader we're going to load it up every frame because we'll be changing it when we do the day night cycle so we just have to call shader.load sky color red green and blue and that should be all done now so we can run that and as you can see that has now worked perfectly for all of the entities in the world the further they are away from the camera the more like the color of the sky they are but of course it hasn't done anything for the terrain because we didn't change any of the terrain shader code so what you need to do now is you need to go back through this tutorial and do all of the exact same code but in the terrain shaders so you need to first do the terrain vertex shader code then the terrain fragment shader code and then finally the terrain shader class code that should then lead you back to this point where you just have to load up the color of the sky to the terrain shader and once you've done that hopefully the fog will work for the terrain as well so let's go ahead and run that and there you go you should now have some nice looking fog in your 3d world and of course you don't just have to use fog to make your world look really foggy if you choose some values like this then you can create just a nice simple haze in the distance and this will be really useful when we limit the render distance because it will allow entities and terrains to fade smoothly in and out of the visible range also this week I've put a download link for my improved OBJ parser that can handle texture seams in the description of this video so feel free to download that and use it in your code instead of the old one it isn't that different from the old one and you should be able to see how it works if you have a quick look through the code and to use it all you have to do is to call obj file loader dot load obj and put in your obj file and that will return a model data object which contains all of the arrays of data that you need to load up the model into a vao using the loader dot load to vao method but yeah that is it for this week i hope you found it useful 
Next week we're going to be working on multi-texturing terrain, which will allow us to have paths and stuff on the terrain, so that will be lovely. Don't forget to check out yesterday's devlog video about the world editor, link is on the screen now. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a wonderful week and I will see you all next time.